Well, hello, dear viewer. Back again for a beer review at the weekend day. Eh? Well, I can help you there. Doing one, another one from the London box from Beer 52. And we are in Camden Town, which isn't up here. It's actually here, just above Mornington Crescent. Every, everyone that comes to London or lives in London know where Camden is and goes there at some point, even if it's just to the zoo, which is just round the corner. But that's it in there, uh, which is a bit of a shame. However, we have got the trusted map. Please, please, Beer 52, keep these going, man. I think this, having this, makes me so damn happy. Uh, right, there it is. And that is the beer we are doing today. It is a Cascadian Dark Ale, which is a really nice beer. I, I, I actually love it. Um, it's from Werewolf Beer. It's called Yerks Cascadian, or Yerkes Cascadian Dark Ale. Truly a, a style uniquely created by American brewing and home brewing. Cascadian Dark Ale takes its name from combined areas of Oregon, uh, Washington and Northern California. It's like a black IPA uh, or a brown ale, um, but drinks almost like uh, a regular West Coast pale. Um, we've selected classic US hops and newcomer Idaho 7 to punch the orange-like character through. Um, looking good, looking good. Um, and in addition to the Idaho 7, uh, Columbus, we have Amarillo and Simcoe. So there's lots of orange going on there. And this is the can. Look at this, this is cool. Werewolf beer, Camden Town, Yerkes. Um, 5.4% on the ABV. And we have a different legend on the back. Um, it basically says, we make classic US craft styles uh, that are balanced, bitter and clear, uh, straight from Camden Town, through the twisted lens of authentic American rock horror drive-ins, Country ca Cans and Grub. Jesus Christ, that's a mad one. Uh, we were born in the USA. Uh, yeah, whatever. Anyway, it actually says they brewed this in honour of Charles... This is the important bit. Charles Tyson Yerkes. Uh, tubes, basically. Yerkes, Charles Yerkes, was partly responsible for initiating the London Underground uh, back in sort of the turn, sort of 1890s, 1900s, I believe. Um, and he was betting or vying for control against JP Morgan and beat them, which is really cool. But from what I understand, he actually died um, before uh, the first, or it would, probably wouldn't have been the first, but before some of the uh, the undergrounds and the tubes, as we call them in the UK, especially in London, uh, were finished. Um, so he put stake loads of money, like absolutely shed loads of cash up, and then he died before it was open. What an absolute legend. Would that happen today? Would someone like Beer 52 stump up loads of money for a project that they weren't going to see I guarantee they wouldn't. Anyway, we even have a black top to this can <gasps> and a silver bottom. That is not good. Oh, the other thing was, it says up here, an American brewery in London. Uh, I just want to check something, though. Obviously, check out Will Werewolf Brew Co. Blah, blah, blah. Right, let's see what we've got in here. Uh, da, da, da. Wow, look at this. I don't like this at all. Look, this is another beer. Come on, if it focuses on there again. Brewed in the EU and then imported back to the UK. 
what is what is going on? We've got all these independent breweries in London, in the UK, and then they contract brew it to the EU. What what is going on? Is this a beer fifty two thing? It must be, because there's so many breweries that are brewing. I know they're brewing in London. They've got breweries in London, but things like this are contract brewed outside the UK. Beer 52, you're going to do something that's supposed to be London. It's all about London, TFL. And the most of the beers so far are not even brewed in the UK. I mean, am I, am I missing something? This is ridiculous. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's unpatriotic. Is it because you guys are up in Scotland? Is that why? Because you're going for your independence and you want to join the EU. Is it a political thing? Or, dear viewer, is it purely about money, perhaps, because it's cheaper? It's cheaper to send stuff to the EU and then import it back into the UK. Can you make more money off it, Beer 52? Because I'm not happy about this at all. And I'm pointing it out to my viewers. This is not an English beer, a British beer, a London beer. This is an EU beer. Makes you think. Outrageous. Man, I think I'm going to sneeze. And please forgive me if I do. I don't know what it is about this room. I've had the windows open all day. Um, but yeah, my God. Right. Two fingers, do you reckon? And this is Werewolf. Yerkes. Let me get my hand out of the way. There we go. Yerkes. Let's bring that back a bit. Oh! It's an American brewery in London. Wow. Oh, itchy nose. My God. Probably cat fluff up my nose. Now, look at the head on that. It is, I would say that's kind of a cream on the way to a kind of tan. And we do have some huge bubbles, but not much happening in that ca uh, Cascadian soup. Ah, uh, wow. Basically, black IPA is kind of an Americanism. And uh, in the UK, for some unknown reason, we wanted to call it something slightly different. Um, so even though a lot of places still use black IPA over here, some places call it dark Cascadian ale. Um, but it's basically a black IPA. Oh, lovely, lovely. I'm getting some lovely aromas. As some of you know, I really love black IPAs. I'm so happy. And Cascadian, or yeah, Cascadian now. I keep wanting to call it something different, but no, Cascadian now. I love them. I love dark beers. And a dark beer with loads of hops is just something that blows my mind. It's, it's fantastic. Basically, it's um, a dark beer, but probably only in colour. It's not a, a roasty beer. And then it's got shed loads of hops in it. It's just oh, lovely. It's almost like a, I was going to say a mild, but that's not strictly true because these can be quite heavy ABV wise. But they're just dark. It is a black IPA. That's a fantastic um, use there. I would say American IPA, a black American IPA, because it's not a traditional India Pale Ale style. Lovely, but this has got a little bit of malt to the nose. It's also got lovely amounts of hops, uh, citrus, the oranges there, but not predominantly on the nose. And there's a lot of generic kind of green hedgerow as well, which is nice. Um, you know, things like pine and oh, all the good stuff. And surely, dear viewer, 
that is worth a like on its own. Why don't you click like now? Give me a thumbs up. Why don't you even um, think about subscribing to the channel? It does help me out. Leave me a message. Comment below. I love a good comment. Cheers and beers, guys. Wow, so a nice amount of creaminess there. But then the green kind of takes off. The green, the hop, goodness. But having like a lot of different uh, hops in there, uh, I'm not getting too much, especially Amarillo and Simcoe both kind of give orange and citrusy type things. Um, slightly different forms, but they're both kind of citrus orange. Idaho 7, for some unknown reason, I think um, Idaho 7's the one that always gives me coconut, because I am tasting a nutty thing in here. Um, and there's sort, of a, there's sort of a chocolatey thing going on, and it's weird because it's almost as though it's coming from the hops themselves, but I know that can't be true. Um, it must be the malt. But maybe it's the interaction between the malt and the hops, the hop oil, shall we say. It's giving me this lovely kind of chocolatey thing. Um, the mouth feels pretty good. It's pretty smooth. Um, it's not really thick. It's probably an average kind of uh, mouthfeel thickness, if you like. Um, oh, my God, that cat hairs are up my nose. Pardon me. Um... I just love these styles of beers. And I the brewery's cool. The story about the guy really connects it to the uh, to London. Why, why, why is this contract brewed outside of the UK? That that's let me down so much. It's ridiculous. And there are breweries in the UK. There are breweries just down the road from you in Scotland, Beer 52, that do contract brewing. What? Why are you sending it out of the country? My God, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's nuts. Like, absolutely nuts. I just, I just really don't get it. And unfortunately... This is a gorgeous beer, absolutely gorgeous beer. So well done for coming up with this. But I have to mark it down on my scoring purely because of the deceit that I feel about this beer. It's nuts. It's just, it's not good in my opinion. Right, let's get back to the beer itself. Lovely beer. I'm liking this. Personally, anything that says IPA, in my book, should be probably over six, six and a half. This is what, five and a bit, five and a half, five, five point four. My apologies. Um, if it focuses, which it probably won't, but there it says there, five point four. Yuckies. But the taste, the things that are going on, all good, all yes. This probably is the best beer I've had in the box so far. But I think I'm going to have to mark it down purely because of the deceit that Beer 52 have done. I very much suspect it's because of money. So, independent breweries like Werewolf Beer, well done. Um, but, yeah, I think you kind of sold out a little bit. If I was a brewer, I'd want to brew my own beer in my brewery, unless I was a contract brewer. Um, American Werewolf, not in London, perhaps. Oh. But you know what? I'm really happy to have drunk that beer. Tasted good. And that's kind of the bottom line, isn't it? 
This has been your loving Uncle John. Please take care of yourselves, dear viewer. Take care of yourselves over the weekend. I will be back. I will return with another beer review real soon. <laughs>